Let's Talk to Animals. My name is Shannon Cutts. I'm an animal intuitive and sensitive here at AnimalLoveLanguages.com. This little feather fluff who's blowing out my right earbud is Pearl Cutts. He never misses an episode. He's very, very nappish right now. Um, he's going to get snappish if I don't let him down on my lap, but he's um, he's always a part of our podcasts and our blogcasts. And of course, here at Let's Talk to Animals, we are all about demystifying interspecies communication, reconnecting the human animal that is you and me to the, the world and the, all the other species living in it, this planet that we all share together. And so each week I invite amazing animal intuitives and energy healers and light workers to join us and share their story. Talk about what it, it what it's like to talk with animals, how um, how they got started, who can do it, and what it um, what it has done to transform their lives. And this week we have Kathy Malkin here from animalmuse.com. And so grateful for the donation of your time and your energy to share with us your incredible story. So welcome, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me here, Shannon. I'm just feeling really lucky that I get to share something that I feel Mm -hmm. incredibly passionate about mm -hmm. um i affectionately say i live an animal centric lifestyle mm -hmm. because it brings me such joy to see the world from the animal's perspective and giving them a, a voice and empowering them not unlike what someone might do for a child even though they're not children but they need voices and I really feel that they called me to do the work. Mm. And, How beautiful. And I really feel that we all can do it. Your listeners all are doing it now. It's just about being more conscious and mindful about how it works and also letting go of so many of our projections and expectations in a way that allows the animal to just be whoever they want to be. And they're so refreshing and delightful to talk to, I feel. Well, that's, I mean, talk about, you couldn't have a better advertisement, right? For, <laughs> to, for, for taking a look at whether communicating with other species might be on your bucket list. It's a pretty good thing to add if it's not already there. And I love what you shared, Kathy, about how everyone can do it. So let's talk about that a little bit because a lot of our listeners and, and viewers are aspiring or new in, the, in their evolving journey. And, you know, there's, there, there's, there's many, many different ways that people come to this work. I love how you say you feel like the animals called you. And there's also many different things that we can do with it. And there's a common misconception in our very driven, westernized world that, you know, if you're going to study something, you better have, you know, a five-year plan and an end game, and you're going to be professional and hang out a shingle. And it's, it's really not about that. It's about realizing that we have capabilities, we have abilities, we have connections that most of us have never even begun to explore and, and maybe don't even know are there. And so, you know, even though here now today, you're, you're a teacher, you're a speaker, you're a communicator, you're a Reiki master, but there was a time not so long ago when you were just starting your journey. And I would love it if you could rewind us a little bit and just share how you, how you got started. Well, I've always felt a, a kinship with animals. I grew up with uh, dogs, cats, guinea pigs. I was even blessed to have horses. Wow. I also, my mom was many things in my life, but the one thing that she really believed wholeheartedly about was that animals were individuals mm -hmm. and had their own personalities. And even though we never called it animal communication, it was just something that we just shared with the animals. 
And I had a bit of a turbulent childhood as many of us who are doing the work have had. And the animals were my rock. They were there for me in a way that nobody else was. But I always seem to feel that even if, even if the people around me maligned me, if you will, um, animals loved me. And I had to believe back then that if the animals love me, they obviously see something that others do not. And it's, it has stayed with me for many, many years. And I really came to this, really was a calling to actually find the work of being an animal communicator. And that, um, away, I call it the awakening. And wow. that happened synchronistically when I adopted my first dog as an adult. I was um, about to study for my master's degree. And I was, and this is something I don't really talk a lot about, but mm -hmm. Spirit is guiding me to share more about my personal story is that I've had um, a lot of spinal challenges. Okay. And my life stopped and I had to reinvent myself because oh, wow. the universe stopped me. I stopped walking. I had to learn to walk again. And the synchronistic events of my dog, my master's degree. And then a few months after I adopted my dog, came a book. But now, oh, my goodness. And what happened was... It's a great story is I was at the vet with my dog, with a wonderful vet in Alameda, well, at the time Oakland, but Alameda, um, Cheryl Schwartz. She wrote the book, Four Paws, Five Directions, first book on acupuncture for dogs and cats. And it, it was, she just had piles of stuff and I was waiting for her to come see my dog. And I came across the book. Wow, the book, exactly. Been... Now, those of you who are listening to us that aren't watching, the book is Animal, I'm sorry, Animal. it's by Penelope Smith, but I can't read. Animals, Animals are, are returned, returned to... to wholeness. To wholeness. And in my, my... In my old eyes, I'm like, what? What is that? Right. <laughs> and Penelope Smith, for those who don't know, she's really the, the mother, if you will, of an, the field of animal communication. Yes. She is my dear friend and mentor and saw something in me that I did not know. And this was her second book. And what called to me was not only, um, she's got a great smile. Incredible front picture. It's a, for those of you who are listening, it's a, a picture of her and she's smiling and she's got her, her precious dog. pup with her and he's smi or he or she is smiling as well. So it's the two of them smiling on the cover of this book, which is pretty awesome. Well, and my master's degree was in not only holistic studies, but consciousness studies. Wow. I focused in counseling and education but the underpinnings was learning about human consciousness. So I saw this book about wholeness and it was like, da, 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 da. and I looked at it and I went, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Of course, uh, I was in my early thirties. I was struggling physically. I had been a very active individual, athletic. And after my back surgeries, like I said, I could barely walk. So I knew that this was something I could do. Now, I didn't really know how or where, but I read the book, I carried it around with me. I dreamed of being an animal communicator because before this book, I didn't know there was such a thing. So I went through my, my master's degree and it was time to do my thesis. And I remember I had my book bag with the book in it. And I went to my advisor and I, we sat down. She said, what do you really want to do? Because through my consciousness studies, I started to see the world from the animal's perspective. Mm. And I said to her, well, I pulled the book out and I sort of sheepishly slid it across the table to her thinking she was just going to laugh at me. 
And I said, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I really want to talk to animals. That's what I want to do when I graduate and what I want to do my thesis on. She stopped, she smiled, and she said, you're not going to believe this, but I'm Penelope Smith's neighbor. No I way. Her. I know No her. way. Way. <laughs> Way, way yes. right? Way. way, awesome! I oh mean, my goodness! My, my mind at that point is just sort of what. So she said, "Well, let me talk with her and see if we can set up an apprenticeship." And I'm like, Incredible. "Oh my god, my my dreams, are, you know, my prayers." Well, unfortunately, three weeks later, she lived in uh, Inverness, California. And there was, a, a, at the Point Reyes National Seashore, there was a horrendous fire. And sadly, she lost her home and many of her animals. Thankfully, she got out. Yeah. So when that happened, I had to pivot and shift and focus somewhere else. But I never gave up um, wanting to study with her. Well, I graduated. And this was 96. And a couple of months later, she came basically to right next to my hometown where I was living in California. Never been there before. Swear she'd never come back again. But she showed up in Concord, California. And my dog, who synchronistically was doing, I mean, he was such an evolved being. He not only had a way of helping me through all my illness and getting me more healthy, but he actually earned his own master's degree. He's wow. the only canine to receive a master's degree from John F. Kennedy University. And what did he study? Uh, canine consciousness. Fantastic. And he received his degree for his compassionate um play because he accompanied me to school because it was really challenging for me to go to school because of my spine it was hard to sit yeah and I had and he he and I also had a bit of agoraphobic back then where it was hard to get places and he went with me and I became less afraid and all the things that we studied created this amazing foundation for the work that I did with Penelope. It was like, oh my God, I get everything she's talking about. I'm right there. And the most amazing gift is she saw something in me that at the time I only dreamed about, which was that I'm good at talking to animals and I'm good at talking with humans. Because that's, well, that's the thing. That's something that I share with my students and people that it's one thing to have conversations with your own animals or maybe with some wildlife, but when you do what we do professionally, you have to take as good a care of the humans as you do the animals. And in, in many ways, the animals are much easier, but the humans are really important. And so, I'm grateful that I have that, that counseling background, the master's level, because I, I, ho I hope it helps me to hold the space for, for everybody, for not only animal, the human to feel safe. Well, you know, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's another common kind of a misnomer or um, a myth, if you will, that, you know, we, we come to animal communication because we like animals better than people, you know, and it's like, when we realize, I remember when my first animal communication teacher told me I would, uh, the part of, part of the process she was teaching us involved connecting with the human. And I was almost like, I was like, oh no, 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 I'm out of here. No, I'm not going to sign up for that, you know? And it turns out that it makes the whole process so much richer. And it also really validates the experiences that we're having with our, the non-human animals we're speaking with that human is also essential to help us build up our confidence and to help us put the pieces together because so often what the animal wants to share with us is not for us. It's for 
their person who knows their daily routine and knows their 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 way of life and and knows what um, what can identify out of those tidbits of data that come through, what do they like? What do they not like? What do they need more of? What do they need less of? And so I, for me, uh, going through the process of remembering my connectivity with all of life taught me in a way that nothing else could, I can't imagine how anything else could have taught me that I am a part of and that I am, um, I'm losing, I'm losing words because it's, I've never tried to describe it before, but it's like, I've never felt more human than when I first started talking with animals. I was like, there's this, these, there's parts of me that I didn't even know were there. <laughs> So, and that's a wonderful, it's a, another wonderful reason, again, you know, circling back to why would you want to learn this? Well, first of all, I'm going to go out on the limb and assume that if you're listening, if you're watching a, a podcast or a vlogcast on, you know, let's talk to animals versus, you know, how to make beanie baby, you know, sell beauty babies on eBay or how to work your smartphone, you probably already have at least a closet interest or a passion, or maybe you just want to feel closer to your own animal. You know, maybe you just, you, you'd like, you'd like to believe, you'd like to experience your belief that your animal is as sensitive and conscious and loving as, as they come across to you. And so it's about giving yourself that opportunity. You know, instead of saying, well, what if I, I'm the only one in the class who can't hear them? Well, what if you're one of, of many in the class who can? And so let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, every communicator, and I, I'm learning this more and more as we continue this journey with Let's Talk to Animals with the show, I get this opportunity every week to talk with these amazing human beings who make me proud to be a homo sapiens and instead of wishing I could change species. And I learned that everybody experiences what it's like to talk with animals a little bit differently. So I'd love it if you would share a little bit more about how that happens for you. Obviously being able to work with Penelope must've really informed your awareness of everything that's possible in terms of how how animals can send information how you can receive it and how you can share it uh, yes and what i want to preface what i'm going to share is i'm going to share with your listeners that we're all different we're all our individual instruments so how I'm going to share with you how I do it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that how you do it is wrong. How Absolutely. You do it, and, and part, I say, to be human is to invalidate oneself. And so part of just the experience is to get the, enough validation to trust what you're receiving. But to be honest, many times I feel like I'm just jumping off a cliff. Like you said, you're getting pieces of a puzzle, if you will, from the animal, and you just have to trust that what you're receiving and seeing is correct. And I always uh, suggest to my students go with their first impression. So how do I receive it? You know, a lot has, I receive it in all ways. Sometimes it feels like a little YouTube vignette, and I see little... Mm little videos. Sometimes I just hear words. Sometimes um, when people ask about physical pains, now I'm very clear, I'm not a vet. I do not diagnose. I just relate whatever I'm sensing from the animal. But many times I will feel it within my own body. But it, you have to be very um, conscious of how your body feels and what's going on in your mind to know that when the animal shows up, it's, it's not you. And that's where I call communicating with animals or sharing Reiki or healing energy is really a, a, a journey of self-discovery. And the animals are there going, come on, you can do it. Remember who you are as a, as a spiritual being, because 
what we do as communicators, I feel the language is spirit to spirit. So I receive it all different her. ways. And it just depends on the animal, I guess the animal, not even I guess, it's the animal, the person. Um, rarely, if ever, an animal has not communicated with me. And the only time, the few times it has happened, when I reflect upon it, it's because the person blocked the energy and for whatever their reason is. Yeah. So that's how I receive it. The, the real challenge, it's easy to receive. The challenge is picking words, finding compassionate and loving ways to share that information with the human so that it, it, it doesn't hurt them because nobody wants to be a bad parent. I know I don't want somebody. And we make choices based on the moment, but it doesn't mean we don't love them. And so a lot of what I feel like is I do relationship therapy. You know, it's, it's, I, I'm reflecting back on some of my earlier experiences uh, facilitating um, interspecies communication sessions. And there have even been a few times when the pet parent comes in consciously saying, I need to apologize. I know I didn't do my best. And a lot of times that's when an animal has crossed over and then it doesn't, grief is grief you know, loss of connection is loss of connection in whatever form it comes in. And it feels like, I love what you say about finding compassionate, empathic ways, because that's the only way that the information that the animal is brave enough to share will end up benefiting them. If we just, you know, hit the human over the hammer well with well the cat says they don't like their food or the dog says you know he's lonely all day when you're gone or what and it's like we're not trying to induce guilt and shaming somebody it, we're trying to honor this human who's come forward saying i want to hear from my animal i don't know maybe i'm doing something wrong maybe i'm doing everything right but I want, I want feedback. Like they're, they're brave enough to come to us and say, yeah. I want to talk. So it's, it's like, that scary. is amazing. Like when I first started talking with animals, the only animals I didn't want to talk to were my own. And I actually show this on my website under the um, animal messages, the pet messages, I think I call it, where I've shared some of the many amazing messages. Animals are masters in their own right at sharing information as compassionately as possible. But I, I love how you're, you're, you're talking about, you know, it's the challenge isn't necessarily receiving the information once we begin to become comfortable with the fact that it is possible, then a lot more opens up. But then it's about getting it through our brain and out our mouths in a format that is useful to the other human in the room. And that can present some challenges, especially, at, like you said, if we're not aware of what's going on in our mind, if we're not aware of what's going on in our emotions and in our bodies and in our hearts, if, 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 um, I just interviewed um, another communicator this morning and she was talking about the same thing. You know, if, if, if I receive a message that prompts a memory from earlier in my life, if I haven't processed through that and, and processed those emotions and if I might get stuck there. And so it's like, it's, I love that you have taken that journey of um, relationship therapy and of healing yourself to really learn who you are, because the, the more comfortable we are in our own company, and the fewer surprises there are still lurking inside of us, I feel like the clearer channel we can be for the pets and the pet parents, because there's a two-way dialogue going on in which we are simply um, the facilitator or the, even the, the intermediary, translator. the translator. And so being able to send and receive those messages in both directions and matching the word and the feeling. And it's a, it's it's a very nuanced art that requires an open heart and a whole lot of courage and 
I, pr I particularly um, adore the, the, the connection that you have between animal communication and Reiki because I'm also, I work very closely with the animal communication and as a Reiki master. And I feel, I'd, I'd love it if you share, I know that wasn't like on the list of questions, but I'd love it if you'd Fine. share a little bit more about the intersection because there, there are so many um, complementary applications for Reiki. And of course, you've studied with Kathleen Prasad, who has been a guest on this show as well, and is amazing. So could you, amazing. Would you, would you be willing to share a little bit more about how you bring the Reiki healing energy in to help the animals? Well, I kind of go, well, the Reiki, the way I practice Reiki is meditation, meditating with animals and holding a compassionate healing space for them so because they recognize i've studied so many holistic modalities since i was a teenager and i had even tried things like healing touch for animals wonderful modality but what the animals kept showing me was don't touch me I'll bite it, or don't push the energy out so when i so grateful again i live close to where kathleen was in teaching um it was fascinating to me because she would i would be studying with her and what i learned as an animal communicator it was almost identical mm. in how we get there how we see things that i learned from not only penelope but from my master's degree so what's evolved over, gosh, now I've been um, a Reiki master teacher for animal Reiki. I don't focus on human Reiki. I, I have too many um, physical challenges with my arms and hands that unless the animal requests it, I'm much happier not. And I the hand positions. And that was yeah. one of the problems with human yeah. touch for animals was there were, I, I the animal was confused. I was confused. It did, yeah. it, it did not work. So now what I'm doing is not only am I teaching Reiki and for animals, but and animal communication, I've intersected with the whole notion of meditation. Because meditating is the pathway to the deeper listening that we need to have and to recognize our interconnection and in a relationship. So I offer an animal Reiki share. It's free once a month, first Wednesdays of the month to bring us together because I think when we come together energetically from our heart, we create this coherence that radiates and it supports each other for doing more. But I also do something called Sunday meditations with animals, which is a little more geared to helping people listen and hear the animals. So Kathleen um, is not real big and I really honor and value her viewpoints that animal communication and Reiki should be separate. And her, I believe that one of the main reasons is that translation thing. It's one thing to receive it, but if you put it out and it's wrong or it hurts somebody, for example, um, you go and that's diagnosis or whatever but what i i can't separate the two they're all the same now when i'm able to just be silent with the animal for a half an hour i can go real deep with them and it is wonderful but i'm also in the oneness and in a deep communion with them when i'm communicating because sometimes i just open my mouth and things come out and i go how do i know that stuff yeah <laughs> Where did, cool, I right? <laughs> Where did I get this? Where did we get this stuff? How do I, you know? But so I, I think meditation for everybody, even five minutes. And what I love about meditating with animals is you can do it sitting, standing, walking, riding if you ride horses, walking, sleeping. I mean, cats, you know, cuddle up with your cat or your dog. So I, I want people to have that tool because it also calms us and it helps bring us more not only balance, 
but more compassion, it's better not only for the individual, but it's better for the animals. And it's a win-win and they are the masters. They are the teachers of the meditation. So I'm just there as a guide. I let the, I just set the scenario and I let the animals do the rest. And it is magical, just magical watching um, not only the humans, but the animals in that connection. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. So that's, wow. I, that's one of my passions right now is helping people meditate with the guidance of animals. Well, the meditation piece is key. And, you know, when I first started meditating, I was 19. I am 51, I believe now. And so it's been a really long time. And it's been a mainstay of my journey, um, in my own recovery, and through the many, many iterations of my career path thus far. And when I first started, I remember, you know, growing up kind of in the Bible Belt and the deep south, the south, it was like, oh, is that anti-Christian? You're meditating. Does that mean you're like a, you know, a Hindu or a Buddhist? It's like, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't care. I just knew that it, it didn't feel denominational. It didn't feel religious. It, it felt like coming home and yes. discovering that home was a welcoming place. And has it has been so um, non-optional for learning to hone the intuitive pathways, uh, my my attention to the intuitive pathways through which animals can send information. And you mentioned that you sometimes you see you see pictures or mini movies, you hear you hear things, you maybe get a gut knowing. There are so many different ways. And in fact, if you're listening right now and you have no idea what we're talking about, head over to animallovelanguages.com, learn with me. And under free tools, you'll find a free five-day animal communication camp and it'll lead you through having a tangible experience of some of these different major intuitive pathways. But meditation is key. And you know, I, I often like to say that meditation is just focused concentration. And I'll tell you what, we meditate on for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours every day it's these little guys and for those of you who are listening and not watching I'm holding up my smartphone and I'm staring at my laptop as I do it and my iPad is charging itself right next to me we meditate for hours days weeks months of our lives on these devices uh, the way that the heron in the bayou behind my house meditates on the fish swimming around in the pond and i think that they're the math i think our animals are the master uh, meditation teachers i mean if if you dangle a strawberry in front of my tortoise malty you can better you can bet she will meditate on it until it goes all the way down her gullet into her tummy where it is safe and nobody can get it from her and so you know considering meditating on in fact, I have a YouTube video um, called Meditate um, on Your Pet that is on our channel. Um, you can find it in the same place you can find these podcasts and these blogcasts. And it's, you know, it's about connecting with our animals at a, an energetic level, a feeling level where we can synchronizing our breathing noticing how it is possible to exist in the spaces between our thoughts, because that's where the animals will communicate with us. When I, you know, it, well, it, when I, our, also feel, mm -hmm. I also feel that meditation is to calm the chatter. And even though people are hyper-focused on their devices, mm -hmm. their mind is going a million miles. So it's time yes, to shift from a human exactly. doing back to a human being because animals <sighs> are able to be. And when you're in, in that state of being through your heart, because our bodies actually function better when we live from our heart center, that's the true intelligence. That's where the animal communication, the Reiki, they all come through the heart. Something I just thought would be uh, kind of interesting to you and your listeners, I like to get to the root of different words. And the word animal comes from the word anima, which is Latin for spirit, life, breath, life force, energy. Reiki 
means the same thing. So yeah. Reiki, which is Japanese, basically for spiritual energy. So it's really being called the same thing that we all are. And we all are made up of spiritual energy. And once we can recognize our spirit to spirit, some of, the, yes, a lot of who we are is dependent on our physical form, but it, it, you realize that there's so much more going on than meets the eye. And when we can get away from our mind chatter, it's not that we can stop thoughts for humans, but it's what we do with it. And our animals mm -hmm. pick up on all that energy. When people come to my classes, everybody can look like they're sitting still and calm. But I know the people who are not still and calm because their animals can't settle. Their animals. Interesting. Are, they're so, Interesting. I, I learned so much about people by watching mm -hmm. their animals. By right watching now. their animals. I'll tell you what, um, a couple of my mentors that I Zoom with regularly um, have called me out on that when I'll show up and I'm kind of gotten my gotten myself in a uh, in, a, in a little bit of a, a, a tizzy about something. And this one right here, um, my, my parrot Pearl will start screeching on the class. He'll start screeching on the Zoom. And I wanted, one day, one of my mentors said, you know, Shannon, I can tell that, um, you know, you're not in the right headspace to have the discussion that we're having because when you are, Pearl is calm and quiet. Yeah, he, Pearl is calm and quiet. But Those I, of you who are listening, he's having his neck feathers right now and he's very calm and quiet because his mommy is having a wonderful conversation with Miss Kathy, the animal muse. And yeah, her mind is nice and quiet, right? Because we're talking about well, meditation. Well, and I think if, if yeah. one thing to take away for your listeners, if you're anything like us, we want our animals to be happy. And one way to do that is to be feel not only safe, but to be feel heard and validated. And a reason to get hold of someone like me, and I call myself the animal muse because animals oh, give us divine inspiration and they can also help us with our creativity. They're there, they're just going, hey, just, just open your heart and listen. Mm -hmm. A lot easier said than done. So no uh, kidding, right? So it really with the takeaway is just if you got five minutes, disconnect, just focus on breathing through your heart center and just be with your animal because it will make them happy. If you're having a relationship problem or you ask, I wonder why my animal is doing this. My response always is, ask them. <laughs> they know why they do things. Give them that honor and respect that they, maybe they don't know their minds all the time, but they pretty much know why they're being out of the box or um, why, you know, they're feeling anxious and stressed. So give... You, it, your animals will thank you in ways you can't even imagine when you honor them or just sit and meditating with them is sharing Reiki, spiritual energy. That's what it's all about. And you don't have to do anything but radiate and shine out your inner light. The animal recognizes it and will do the rest. Absolutely. So keep it simple. Keep it simple. Absolutely. Everybody. Absolutely. And that's, you know, the simplicity, what happens in the journey, at least from what I've, what I've experienced and, and what so many communicators have shared with me is that it begins simply, it begins simply out of the heart. And it often begins with a subtle or even perhaps a pronounced experience of a single communication or a series of communications. And then it becomes complicated you know, because our minds get involved and then we go through that process and then it, it, it simplifies again. It becomes simple again and we return back we to that, to the root. The yeah, we exactly. have to get rid of like 
whether it's appealing back the layers of the onion, mm -hmm. I've heard the metaphor taking lampshades off to you get to your mm -hmm. brightness. But in the beginning, I mean, I've worked over 25 years doing this and working on becoming a clearer and clearer channel, which means I have to take the layers off exactly. of my own self. Exactly. And so I'm on the journey too. A couple of years ago, I got a call from some grad students at San Jose State University, and they were doing a research study on jobs that made people happy. Mm -hmm. And they seem to have done research, I don't even know how, that said that people who talk to animals are some of the happiest people in their wow. job. Yeah, I would love to see that study if you happen across it. That is cool stuff. It's very cool. I mean, the thing is, I deal with a lot of things that aren't pretty. Most people don't call me on their best day. Right. Most people call me on maybe their worst day or yeah. when they're challenged. And that's okay. I do pet loss, grief counseling. I do hospice and illness support because I've had so much experience. And again, I'm grateful to my first dog, Casey, who brought me to all of this, because uh -huh. when he transitioned, he looked at me from spirit and said, people should never have to do this alone. And people should have the love and support they need to recognize that animals are family. And sometimes we have more of a connection and a deeper relationship with our animals than we do our humans. And Absolutely. It's, and it's not that we don't love our humans, but our animals, they get in our hearts in a very special way. They sure do. They sure do. Well, we're about at time and um, so grateful for all of you listening and watching. This has been profoundly inspiring for me, Kathy. And I want to point out that you have uh, you have the Sunday meditation. It sounds like that happens. It's, ha it's actually happening this Sunday. This and Sunday. Okay. This so Sunday every at 5 p.m. Eastern. It's free. You're welcome to come. You don't need Okay, so animal. it's the third Sunday of every month. I'm on your website right yeah. now. So that's the third Sunday of every month. And you've also got your monthly... It sounds like it looks like it's a Wednesday night. The um, first Wednesday of every month. Of every month. And they then can there'll be more classes coming out to teach you how to do communication. What I've learned, I'm so grateful my introduction to animal communication coming up next month. My puppy, Boogie Bear, is a master teacher. All I have to do is set him up. And he gives everybody the experience of hearing um, an animal. In fact, he, when he was about uh, four or five months old, went and taught uh, two Ivy League professors, uh, one who was a baboon professor at Harvard, the other one who studied something about inner connection in, between people. And when they worked with Yogi, they just the scientists minds were blown it was yeah it was one That's of the highlights very cool. of my career so I thank love you it. so much for having me oh my me. goodness really it's, been a, it. it's been a joy having you Kathy Malkin animal muse m-u-s-e dot com you can find more information about all of her classes and her meditations and reiki offerings of course you can find uh, pearl and malty and me shannon at animallovelanguages.com more importantly you can find the whole list of our podcasts uh, there's a podcast link and you can listen we, every week we come out with a new episode we've got a wonderful archive that you can enjoy of so many brilliant communicators and intuitives and energy healers and light workers who are just inspiring good 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 human animals to know so to speak so uh, be sure to, to to give us a like to leave us a five star or you know a 50 star review if that's available in your area and share this with it with it with a friend who loves animals a, a friend who keeps company with animals we're still a young show and we always appreciate 
appreciate your support. Kathy and I look forward to hearing from you and we send you all of our love and our gratitude for your time and your love for animals. Okay, bye for now. See you next week. Bye.